Hi everyone, it's Jerry. Let's have a look at a game from round four of the 2018 Candidates Tournament. On the white end, Vladimir Kramnik, he's paired against Fabiano Caruana. So let's see what happened. E4, E5 game. Petrov's defense. So the E-pawns are gone. Queen E2 denotes the Cozio attack, forcing Queen E7. As otherwise, D3 takes advantage of the pinned knight. Knight c3, knights are gone, queenless middle game on board. Getting the miners out, we have in this game an instance of opposite sides castling, white centralizing, and after bishop f6, this is a strong post, so white takes some steps to challenge that bishop, knight d2, eyeing up e4. Rook e8, not so fast, says black, but white insists, wants knight to e4. Both of these bishops are strong. Black had challenged this bishop straight away, and does, knight e5. Don't have to move the bishop just yet. Bishop f4 in the game. This knight is pinned. Knight takes bishop and you lose. Takes rook as a mate. So king f8 renews this threat. Now white reacts, bishop d5. c6, bishop b3. Bishop f5, and this is really the first point in this game that I'd like to touch on. This is a lengthy one, a 66 mover. The move knight to e4, it appears, can be played right now, but isn't, and was one of the things that I questioned when reviewing for this video. In the game, it's h3, but why not knight to e4? Doesn't this seem very appealing? You're striking at the bishop and d6 twice. Why not knight to e4? Bishop takes knight. White would have the bishop pair, but how good is this guy in bishop b3 after d5? Not good at all. A c6 d5 structure negates the bishop. That's the big thing to recognize about this idea of jumping into e4. If black can acquire c6 d5 structure, the bishop suffers. Therefore, Something else is tried. h3, preparing to expand on the king side, rattle the black minor piece, uh, rat rattle the minor piece posts. g5 is not just an aggressive move, but defense against these possibilities, possibilities of g4 and g5. Bishop finds a new home, king g7, and c4 starts to make a little bit more sense. Uh, you know, understanding this idea of black constructing a c6 d5 structure to negate the bishop. c4 interferes with this. It may appear a little bit weird to do a move like this, kind of putting a blindfold over the bishop, but it prevents black from playing d5 and has the possibility of pressing forward with c5, undermining the strong post on e5. Continuing, we have g4. If black tries to do something like c5, saying, you know, your c4 move was stupid, you know, you're never going to be able to play c5, that's not without its issues. Playing c5 would create a huge hole on d5, and you could be sure the knight would be quick to pounce on that square. In the game, it's g4. Knight e4 only now. Bishop takes knight. Rook takes bishop. Bishop pair. This bishop is not functioning just yet. His eyes will be opened shortly, though. Bishop g5 check, king b1. g takes h3. And now we have c5, really looking to undermine the knight. There is no capture or a push that would drop the knight. Carwana plays f5, chases the rook away. b4 is now available. Striking at b7. Doing something other than the move c5, this is where there is a bit of a shift in the evaluation. The computer suggests uh, capturing on h3 here, but what may have kept Kramnik from capturing on h3 is a knight arriving on f3. It would be a pretty invasive piece. You know, f5 followed up with knight to f3. So c5 in the game. This gives Caruana some advantage, and I don't normally draw so much attention to 
uh, the clock times, but you know, keep an eye on them on the right-hand side there. Uh, they factor in with this game. This is a great race of a game, race related to clock times, meeting time controls, and as we will soon see, a race regarding past pawns. So, continuing, it's f5, rook b4. Black has a passed pawn on g2. Rook takes b7 check. The king has to go to the corner. Caruana is in blitz mode at this point. Kramnik still with about 25 minutes. 15 moves still for each side before that first time control is met. Move 40 gives the players 50 minutes. Move 60, 15 minutes. King, at, king to h8. You would like to move forward. You know, king f6, king g6. Let me just touch on why not this move. Well, that'd be mate in two. That's no good. And going to, let's say, this square. Well, that place a places a restriction on the knight. He has to defend against bishop f7. And you can't rely upon that knight. f4 chases him away. So, king has to go in the corner. Not fun, but best. C takes d6. Knight f3. Bishop's hit. Where should he go? There's no good square for him. If he goes to g3, that's brought into question. If he goes here, that's just ugly. And the one knight, one piece, would be restricting two white pieces. That would not be a good decision either. Kramnik makes the best move in this difficult position for white. Bishop a4. The bishop is given up. Bishop takes c6. And with this capture... There's an additional passed pawn present. Two passed pawns for white. And two for black. But this guy on g2 will be scooped up. Bishop will pick him up shortly. Rook a to d8 in the game. d7. This is a super valuable pawn. There's no time to scoop up g2. Well, it wouldn't be best, let's say. Bishop takes g2 allows rook takes d6. Rook takes rook, and white will soon be getting mated. Not so fast. White preserves this bishop and knows g2 will be picked up next. Rook e2, bishop takes g2. Rook takes f2. Two pass pawns for black, two for white. Currently the bishop's under fire. New home on c6. This knight relocates. The only reason he was on h2 was to win the bishop. Time to relocate. Knight g4 it is. Rook takes a, and with that captured, now every pawn at this move 32 is passed. Weird imbalance. Knight on board for black. White has two pawns for it. These aren't just any pawns, though. Four connected passers and two split passers for team black. Weird. Crazy game. One race of a game. Knight e3. Rook g1. Notice the times. The bishop is hit. In bullet mode, black here. With an advantage around a minus 2 in the computer's eyes. Most of that is thrown away with black's next move, h6. You could see how a move like that would be played very quickly. Just looking for some stability. Bishop's defended. The king can now help out next. Computer suggests at this point to take on c2. Basically saying, you take my bishop, I'll take your bishop. h6 in the game. Again, throwing some of the advantage away. Rook to c7. King now improves. And we have a4 this stage. So, trying to do something like rook to c8 with the idea to knock out the bishop and then take the rook. The timing is not right for that. What would be the issue with rook to c8? Well, after, let's say, king to f6, oh, excuse me, not king to f6, king to f8, you can't go in for taking out the bishop because that's mate. So we're seeing the idea behind a4, one of the ideas behind a4, not only produce a flight square, but 
Now the pawn is four steps away from promoting, and it already has the assistance of the bishop. Continuing, it's king f7. Now a move like rook to c8, the king is at least close by to help defend. d8. Bishop b5, white takes some time out to defend c2. King e7. a5. These pawns are scary. Black is there just barely to defend against this one pass pawn, but now there's another. Rook f4 trying to get behind. That shot down. c3. King to d6. That's an issue. Uh, these moves, this move 38, uh, you know, the, the moves just before move 40, tournament players especially know that's where big mistakes are made. Just as you're about to make time control, gain some time on your clock, there's an issue with the move king to d6. The best move in this position is rook to c6. I like to highlight this move rook to c6. What would black do after rook to c6? King takes pawn, you're going into discovery checks. There's rook takes pawn, knocking out the defense of the bishop, and then winning the bishop next. And if king to e7, white can play a6, drop this pawn, but then drop into c8. Multiple threats, one against the rook and the other to pick up the knight. White does not take advantage of this mistake. After king to d6, it's rook b7, holding as a roughly equal position. Continuing, it's rook g4. Caruana says, can we please exchange rooks? I would much rather have connected passers than split passers. No way, says Kramnik. Rook e1. f4. The pawns continue to march. a6 h5, a7, rook, eight, rook to a8 is mandatory. The threat here is rook b8, and there's no stopping a8 equals queen. Rook a8 is played. Both players have met time control. That move 40 time control have banked some time. Continuing, we have b4, h5, c4, h3, c5, check, king e5. Notice the central king position for black and the white king position. You know, if these pawns are a little bit closer, if they do queen, that's hitting hard. That's hitting with check in many lines. Now, in this position, white is better with the move bishop to c6, but bishop c6 is not played in this position. This is one of the... Uh, cool variations that I came across when preparing for this video. I like to highlight this bishop c6 line. This is a best move, not the move played in the game. Bishop c6 with the idea of rook c7 is not good, but bishop c6 with the idea of rook to h1 next is good. I like to highlight this idea. If bishop c6 was played in this position, and h2. Again, rook h1 would be there uh, as a best reply for white, but I want to touch on this variation. It seems really good to play this move. Rook to c7, you're ready to knock out the rook, your bishop's around, you know, to help defend against these passers. What would black have here that's really cool? You could give up the rook for the pawn and play rook to g1. What does this rook do? Can't take the rook. Black recaptures, produces a queen. And what else is white to do? If rook c1, black could exchange rooks and then interfere with the bishop's defense of h1. We're not done yet, because after bishop takes knight, it appears black just takes the bishop and will next promote. That's not true. If king takes bishop here, white would be winning with promotion, check, and that clears the seventh rank for the rook to be there just in the nick of time to guard h1. However, in this position, black doesn't have to take the bishop. 
the cool move here would be f3, discover check and interference of h1 equals queen. Black would be winning. Again, this is with this bishop c6 and rook c7 idea. That's the one that came to mind for me. It seemed like this and then trying to hunt down the rook next would be really good. But yeah, there's a big issue with that. Those little interference ideas that black has. Bishop c6 was not played. Rook b8 in the game, this throws away the advantage that white had. Rook takes a7. White missed something here. Let's see what this miss is. Rook g8, this was Kramnik's idea by giving up the a-pawn. And that is to get to g8. Why does this look so powerful? Well, it's ready to knock out the last defender of d8. Black can't allow this. The bishop must be saved and is. And it appears that white can now take the rook. Take the rook. Right? There's no recapturing because the knight is pinned. But white can't take the rook. This is maybe what Kramnik overlooked when playing rook to b8. Rook takes rook. What's the issue with rook takes rook? King f5. You see the threats? Not only to take the rook, but to end the game. Rook a1 is mate. All the squares are covered, would be covered around the white king. So you can't take the rook. So Kramnik's forced to play the, play the move d8 equals queen, diverting the bishop away from this diagonal. Now you could take the rook, but now this position is level. Move 49 and the clock times. Caruana has an edge on the clock. It's now Kramnik who is in bullet slash blitz mode. Bishop f6, now this is a threat. Similar idea. Rook g6, it's not the same story. In this case, the rook is can be defended with bishop d3 if king f5 is played. So, rook b7 in the game. Bishop e2, rook takes b4 check. King a2, knight c2. This gives white some advantage now. Better move, apparently, is bishop to e7, but okay. Knight c2 in the game, rook c1. Knight d4. Bishop to d3, apparently better bishop g4, keeping a watchful eye over f3. We'll see how that factors in. Bishop d3 in the game, rook a4, king b1. Knight b3, the ever pesky knight, threatening a rook. He has a check in mind. White inserts a check. King d5, Kramnik, not a lot of time here. Still has a few more moves to gain 15 minutes on the clock, meeting that move 60. It appears that you could take the bishop, but that would mean you drop your rook. King c2 in the game. Knight d4, king back to b1. Computer likes king c1, keeping open the option to meet rook a1 with bishop to b1. However, after knight d4 and king b1, we have knight f3. And if this game is to continue, if white, uh, if white has any chance to try and save this game, rook takes bishop must be played here, allowing knight takes rook and trying to prevent these pawns from promoting next. But in the game, we do not have rook takes bishop, but rather rook to d1 in this you know, move 59. Again, these moves just before meeting time control, banking more time on the clock. That's where there's big problems, and this is the, this is a big problem. Rook d1 is met with rook a1. King c2, rook takes rook, and unfortunately you just can't take the rook back. What would be the issue? King takes rook. We're seeing the significance of this strong post on f3. White and black is able to coordinate on the square h4. How's that factor in? Well, after h2, what are you doing about this guy? How are you stopping him? Rook h6? Nope. There would be bishop h4. Black's promoting. So you can't take the rook. So this game goes on for a little bit more. Bishop a6, trying to reroute the bishop on the main diagonal. But this allows black some time to save the rook with check.
save the bishop with check, and then pick up the last white pawn. And we're just a few moves out. Black now being up a knight and two pawns. A few moves out before white throws in the towel after this move. 66, F2. Kramnik resigns. The threat here is to give a check and push through. And how do you defend? Bishop a6. Black could reply with h2, reminding white that there is a second pass pawn. So rook here, check, promote, and you could promote next, and the bishop has to give himself up. Of course, this is winning. But this is as far as it went in this back and forth game. Again, the clock times played a huge role. And, you know, these passers, we had a case of, or a situation where each side had passers, a total of six pass pawns at one point. And, yeah, Carwan is the one that pulled through in the end. We have a look at the tail of the tape on this one. We could see it was certainly a roller coaster. Kramnik. And right around this point in this area, of course, this means that... Caruana had an advantage, but did not have a lot of time on the clock when he had this advantage. And then, you know, move 40 was met. They gained some time right around here. White with the advantage. Rook to b8, missing that idea eventually of a very cool king to f5 move, threatening mate and threatening the rook. It was even for a while, but right around this point, Kramnik, even though having an advantage at that point, was then down on time and eventually blundering and decisive advantage in the end for Caruana. Each side with uh, plenty of hiccups, inaccuracies, mistakes, and blunders. In the end, Kramnik with a 30 average centipon loss and 16 for Caruana in this back and forth uh, game. Quite a race we had on board. Anyhow, as usual, feel free to leave any feedback to this video in the comment section below. Hope you enjoyed it and maybe even took a thing or two away from it. That's all for now. Take care. Bye.